Uh, today is the day we're going to start pulling the engine out of the Dodge Neon and getting ready to put the electric motor in. Uh, first of all, I apologize for the less than stellar quality of video. Ben has real work to do, so we're shooting this with a, a consumer grade camera. Please don't flame us. Uh, what we're going to do, what I've already done today, is a couple of things I've picked up over the years from people doing uh, engine rebuilding and things like that. First thing to do, take the car over to one of the manual car washes where you've got a high pressure wand. Wash the bottom of the car, wash the engine compartment, all of that. You can get all the grease and stuff out. It's a lot cleaner to work with. Second thing I've done is brought it in here, jacked it up, pulled all the drain plugs and let it sit overnight. Drain out the transmission, drain out the engine oil, drain out the power steering fluid, drain out the radiator fluid. And if you let them sit overnight, you've got less chance of things spilling on you as you take them apart. The third trick I've done is before I pull the battery out, I found the, the fuel line from the back of the car into the fuel, the fuel rail. Disconnected that, put it into a gas can, bypassed the fuel relay, and ran the fuel pump, which is in the gas tank, and that way I was able to drain the gas tank all the way down, put it right into a gas can, I can go ahead and use that in another car. So what we've done now is we've gotten a hold of the manual on the car, I'm using a Haynes manual, it tells me all the things I need to disconnect and remove before I lift the engine out. Okay, I'm not going to walk you through all the processes of moving or removing an engine from a car, that's a standard thing, there's people who've done it, places that have done it. I'm going to talk to you about specific things that you want to think about because of an electric car conversion. The first one is, is as you unbolt or unhook cables, label all of them. Even if they're from something that the car used as an ex uh, the ignition, or the, even though there's something that the car had to use for the gas engine, go ahead and label it because you'll be able to track those wires later and reuse them for other things like control of the motor or temperature sensors, whatever else. But if you know where the wires are, you can reuse them. The other thing I did is whenever I unbolted something that I was going to have to put back in place, I labeled what it was, put the bolts back in the holes. That way when I go to put the hood prop back on, I can put it right where it goes. I also, before I removed the hood, traced around the hood with a permanent marker. And that way when I put the hood back on, I'll be able to align it perfectly and it'll close properly. That's one of the things that's a little tough to do if you aren't, uh, aren't a body man. Whenever I took anything else out that I wasn't going to put back up, back in, I still put the bolts back in the holes. That way when it comes time to mount the throttle body or mount the, the motor controller or anything you want, you've got bolts that match the holes, you don't have to search around. As long as I've got the car dismantled this far, which means I had to pull the half shaft, which involves half dismantling both of the front suspension sides, I'm going to go ahead and check all the bushings, check the bearings, replace anything that needs replacing, replace anything that's even iffy as long as it's cheap. For example, I'm going to put new transmission seals where the shafts went into the transmission. It's a whole lot easier to do now when everything's apart than it is to have to go back later and replace pieces. The other thing I'm going to do is use a throttle body off of the car. The newer cars have a throttle position sensor, which tells where the throttle is when you put on the gas. That throttle position sensor of all the ones I've checked has been a 5K pot, which is the same thing most electric car motor controllers want to see to control your speed. The advantage of using the throttle body that came off the car is that the length of the cable, the mounts, and everything is already set up for the throw of the, the gas pedal and the, the angle that you need on the throttle itself. All you have to do is bolt the throttle body to the body somewhere, run the cable to it like it was before, pull the wires off the connector, and you're ready to run them right into your motor controller. You also have the advantage of using the electrically or the waterproof connectors on the different, uh, the different plugs.